Hey everybody, Renny Skaysbrook here for Cycle News. Now today, we've just jumped off this thing. This is a very important bike for Suzuki. This is the 2022 GSX S1000 GT Plus. Now that little plus sign at the end of the name, that gets you these things. These are the 36 litre uh, saddlebags. Now, if you, did want to buy, you didn't want to have the saddlebags, you can still buy this thing without them. It's the standard model. $13,149 MSRP here in the United States. But if you did want this one, it's gonna cost you $13,799. You know, you can also buy a standard one and buy these things as accessories, but you're gonna end up spending more than if you just bought this thing to begin with. So I think they're gonna sell probably five of these to every one of the standard one, but that's the way it goes. It is a very important model for Suzuki because the sport touring market nowadays is pretty popular. Um, it's getting a lot of renewed interest, you know, bikes like the S1000 XR BMW, Ninja, Ninja 1000 SX, you know, all these bikes have been around now for, for a few years, but as, bike, as riders start to come off sports bikes, you know, there's that generational shift where they maybe quite don't want to go for a cruiser or an adventure bike, but they still want to have that sporty performance, but without the wrists, uh, as, you, as you normally get on something like a, a Gixxer 1000 or a CBR or something like that, they start looking to more, more towards something like this. Now this thing is, uh, it's based off the Suzuki 1000, G6R 1000K5, the motor. It's obviously not the same motor that it was back in 2005. It's been heavily revamped with different cams and all kinds of stuff, but it's still the, the same bones effectively of what that motor was. I mean, that is Suzuki's greatest hits, the greatest hit in their greatest of hits really, as far as sports bike goes. It's a bit of a halo bike for the company and it has been used over the years to kind of spawn a bunch of other bikes. Uh, it's been put out to stud effectively, like a, like a good horse. And you know, we've seen things like the Katana come up, we've seen the previous generation of the GSX naked bikes and you know, it's, it has been used very extensively. But hey, that's because it's a good thing. Um, you know, Suzuki knew a good thing when they had it and they've used it very widely and got a lot, a lot of life out of it with different models. This thing is very much a, a sporty bike. You know, it's, not a, it's much more on the sport side of sport touring. When you consider that you've got that super bike motor which has such good torque. I mean, it's, you can roll the thing from, I'm just looking at the dash here, you know, 3,000 to about sort of 7,000. That's a pretty broad range for your torque. I mean, we were, as we were riding earlier today, we were just surfing up and down there in fifth and sixth gear, and it's got the best induction noise. It sounds old school. It's a proper old, gruff sounding superbike motor, which guys coming off sports bikes are absolutely going to love. I mean, I certainly enjoyed it. But the thing I really did enjoy is the fact that it was comfortable. Uh, for me, I'm a big naked bike guy. I love my naked bikes, as you probably know. Sports bikes for me, are, I'm probably getting to the age where I'm gonna start looking at things like this as my bikes. But uh, as you can see here, big, nice, tall handlebars. You can get a taller screen as well. I'm sorry, but I don't actually know the height of the screen. For me, at 6'1", that screen is, it's not quite right. I would probably use the taller screen. I would like to have the option of using the taller screen. You do get a bit of wind buffeting, um, but overall the, the ride position is very comfortable. The seat itself is quite hard, which I'm a big fan of. I don't like seats that basically sink over time. And therefore, you know, you start slouching and your back starts to hurt and, and you start feeling every bump from that rear suspension. It's, uh, so they've done quite a good job to keep the ride, I guess, not, not stiff, but just taut, you know, so, it's, so it sort of maintains its composure over a long ride. This is not a, it's not a, it's not a super digital bike. You not you don't have an IMU, no cornering ABS, things like that. You don't have electronic suspension as well. Uh, KYB, uh, the guys that give you the suspension for this thing, fully adjustable at both ends, and it does make a bit of a difference too. Like we played around a fair bit this morning or earlier today with. Uh, the rebound on the shock just to try and slow things down because it is quite springy as a at, a at a base for me. We just try to quieten things down because you can get after it on this bike and so you want the thing to be nice and compliant while you do it. I'm not a hater at all on the fact that it doesn't have a, a massive array of electronics because it's stuff that you could get lost in. Whereas this thing does have the electronics, but it has electronics only really that you need. So you've got your Suzuki drive mode select where you've got your, your three different engine modes. You've got five stage traction control. You have that 
beautiful quick shifter which they've developed now for the 2022 range it also came out on the naked bike really lovely quick shifter it's not a race style quick shifter where it's going to be super quick and direct it's just a lovely smooth never miss a gear it's just it's a really nice quick shift um, but overall the electronics that they do have are very easy to adjust you have cruise control yay um, that's a given for a bike like this Unfortunately, it doesn't come with heated grips as standard, and I think that's a bit of a bummer. I feel like you could have, they could have done that, um, put that in as a little bit of extra for, especially on the plus. You know, I figured you may as well, if you're gonna get, get the plus where you get these things, you get saddlebags, you may as well get heated grips thrown in as standard. But I am a big fan of the dash. Um, you know, Suzuki bought out an absolutely shocking dash on their naked bike, which this is basically like the naked bike, but boosted with, you know, bodywork and bags and different bits and pieces and extra electronics. But this is a good dash. Uh, it's a very simple dash, very easy to understand. You can pair your phone to it so you can do your Google Maps, your navigation, you can play Spotify through there and you, know, you can look at your text messages and bring phone calls if that's what you like to do when you go riding. I personally hate it. <laughs> uh, half the reason why I go riding is so I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> But overall, it's, uh, it's a really nice little bike. It's very easy to use. It's not uh, complicated. It's pretty much an old school style of bike, which is a good thing now when you consider what bikes are. I mean, you get bikes like the Africa Twin, like the DCT Africa Twin. I mean, you need an encyclopedia to be able to use that thing, especially the dash. Whereas this is pretty old school in, the, in its feel, uh, which is a good thing for me. You know, you just get on the thing and ride. You know, it's great. I mean, you've got your cruise control. It's not um, radar cruise control, so not adaptive cruise control. So it's the old school style. Obviously, you don't have, you know, as I say, you don't have your IMU, so no cornering ABS and any of that stuff. But do you read it? Do you really need it? I don't think I'm missing it on my ride. So overall, it's really good. Um, good, pillion, good pillion seat, although, I don't know how long you would want to sit on one of these things for. Uh, if you're just going for an hour long ride or something or other, that's fine. But I mean, we did, what, 10 hours on the bike today. And I don't think anyone's going to want to sit on that thing for 10 hours. Uh, I was looking for a stop at that point for sure, I can tell you. Um, but I'll show you before we go, I'll just show you the ride position. Um, so at 6.1, that's me. So I probably would actually like the seat a little bit taller if I'm being picky here but overall it's a very comfortable ride position with that just like a naked bike you know you don't have any weight on your wrists as you can see the angle of the screen is right there for me um, so I would like the taller screen um, but overall I, I do love the styling of it you know you've got these funky lights up front these tiny little lights which put out a really good beam um, overall a, a nicely designed bike and very nicely priced too you know under 14,000 bucks for this thing MSRP obviously before you end up having to go through and put your taxes on and dealer charges and that sort of stuff but overall a really good bike for some, from Suzuki and I'm very pleased that it is so because uh, I think it's going to surprise a few people